<clears throat> Hi. Um, so I wanted to come back and um, say that I'm sorry the, the first part of the video didn't upload properly that I was showing how to make this pattern which is called the porcupine pattern. And uh, I'm working on a scarf and it's a really cool pattern. And um, all the information is in the second video which is really short to watch. And I'll try to make this one really, really short. But in the second video I just kind of talk about blocking. Um, because my first video was showing uh, how to set this up and how to how to do it. Um, <clears throat> so I got this pattern from Classic Elite Yarns, um, October version of Castor, Cancer Awareness um, Month, the Pink Scarf Project, 30 scarves a day, and um, this was one of the scarves that one of the ladies made for um, for her. Uh, for her person uh, and for awareness, uh, and it and she used the porcupine stitch, which is a lace stitch. And if it's where it just looks different depending on which yarn you use. If you use a really thin thread yarn, like a zero to a even a ten, it's gonna turn out really really lacy. If you use a silk kind of yarn or a um, blend of rayon and silk and uh, wool and cotton or whatever. It's going to be really, really um, luxurious looking. And you can get different looks from it by just using different yarns and different size needles. The um, pattern was designed by Andy Clark, A-N-D-I-C-L-A-R-K. And I'll leave a link as to where to go to for the pattern. Um, the pattern works up in multiples of 12 plus 4, so you just choose how wide you want your scarf to be or whatever you're making. This makes a great runner, like a runner for a tablecloth. It makes really great tablecloth. It makes beautiful runners for end tables. It makes really cool, um, depending on the colors you're using, really great balances. But it also makes really, really pretty scarves. And I'm just playing with different yarns to see to see how it looks because it looks different every every single thickness of yarn super bulky six five eight chunky um four worsted weight whatever you can use whatever you just have to increase your size of your needle so if you were using a zero to three finger link yarn or a dk yarn or a thread yarn or or a zero thread yarn or whatever, you would use a 5.5 um, needle is what they're calling for. If you want it to look like, and you would use the yarn they're calling for if you wanted it to look like what I'm going to link to. But you can make it uh, various seasons and ways by just adjusting your yarn and your needle. So like I said, um, well, I didn't say it. I said it in the first video that didn't upload. You cast on long tail using a long tail cast on, um, which I can't really show you now, but um, there are a million videos out on YouTube on how to long tail cast on. And the way this um, pattern goes, I cast on 28. 12 plus 12 plus 4 is 28. You're always going to want the stitches you start out with in every row. There's nine rows to work, and Two of those rows are worked twice, and one row is worked three times, and then there, uh, and then there's three more. So I really only have to show you a few of them, and I'll do it really, really quick. For every row, you're going to knit the first two. For the first row, you're going to yarn over, and you're going to knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. Yarn over, knit two together. Now when you see yarn over, some people actually um, do this to yarn over and then they knit two together. And that's fine too. It's just, uh, that's more like the English style to knit and I knit more continental style where I dip and then I try to stay on the needle when I can. and just try to do it all in one move so you're not so you're just kind of like moving your yarn about. I switch between 
continental and um, English knitting. So whatever way is comfortable for you, yarn over and knit two together all the way across for the first row. When you get to the last two, uh, knit two individually. Straight there. It can be boring watching, so I'm not going to do all the rows. I'm just going to do a few of them to show you how they're done. Okay, and you should have two left over always at the end. And knit one. And to knit, you're going left to right underneath the needle like this crossways and then you're counterclockwise yarning over and bringing that loop up like that okay so for each row just kind of like pull your yarn down and both sides will be the same so it's a reversible one it's really cool Okay, row two, you're going to knit the first two individually. And then you're going to purl across. So you're going to put your yarn in the front. So it was in the back to knit. Now we're going to put it in the front of the needle that's loaded. And we're going to, instead of going this way, left to right underneath, we're going to go right to left in front and then come up around and grab that and pull it off. So that's a pearl. And um, people do their pearls all different. Some people hate doing pearls. I don't mind doing pearls at all, but I just think you got to find your comfort level or a way to... What, what I used to hate about knitting and, and I was really, really frustrated was... Um, trying to learn was when people tried to show me how to hold my needles and it didn't work for me that way um, because I'm I'm a lefty and I um, really felt the difference in knitting even though I converted to right I'm more I think I'm like ambidextrous or whatever but um, I'm more right uh, dominated now and people would show me how to um, wrap all my yarn around me to get the perfect tension and how to hold my yarn perfectly and sometimes it really did help for your gauge and your tension and your stitches to be all even and sometimes it was just like oh come on I can't even move I can't even do that and when you start learning and somebody's telling you you're not standing right you're not sitting up right you're not holding your needles right you're um, you know, you're terrified you're going to drop stitch, and oh god, what do you do if you drop stitch? You got a hole, right? There's ways to fix everything with knitting. There really is, and it kept me away from knitting for a long, long time. So I was scared. I was scared of it. I knew how to knit, but I was terrified to make anything for anybody because I was afraid it would fall apart. <laughs> I used to have nightmares of things unraveling after I gifted somebody with it. Really, I think I do better with knitting than actual crochet. I don't know. I like both. But you're going to purl all the way across. And then you're going to knit those last two. So you're going to put the yarn in the back. And knit. And knit. So row one was yarn over. Knit two together all the way across to the end. And row two is... Um, knit two, purl across, knit two. That is what you're going to do in row four. Purl across, knit the first two, knit the last two. Row three is really, really easy, so I'm not going to be on camera for this. I'm just going to turn the camera off while I'm doing it. You're just going to knit every stitch for row three, which is just, again, left to right underneath, crisscross, yarn over, or counterclockwise yarn over and pull up your loop. If I try to do it slow, 
um, it probably won't work for me. So that's about as slow as I can do it. Now, if you want to use this finger to control your yarn, and what I do is I kind of like sit on part of the yarn, <laughs> or I put my leg against it, you could go over like this, and this is called like being a picking the yarn, where you go like this. And now you don't have to come off the needle, and you just push it down like this, and all the way across. Just keep pushing like this. But you have to find what way works for you. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue knitting across, and then my row four I'm gonna do, which is knit the first two, purl across, and knit the next two, and I'll meet you back here. Okay, so um, I've done row three and four, which was three was knit across, and four was knit the first two and purl across, same as row two and knit the last two. Row five, and this is how it looks so far, and as you can see it's reversible. Um, let's see if I can get a better. So it's cool, of course not blocked yet, but you can begin the finger blocking process by just stretching down as you go. Um, and then steam press it, or mist it and steam press it. So row five is we knit the first two again. And then we're gonna do something called a S2KP. Or S... SK2P, yeah. Okay, so what we're gonna do is we're going to slip a stitch from this needle to this needle, and we're gonna slip it, we're gonna enter that needle the same way we would if we were going to knit, meaning the yarn is gonna be in the back, and we're gonna go left to right underneath and just gently slip it off onto this needle. And then we're gonna knit two together, and then we're gonna take this needle and come over here and grab that one that we slipped right there and put it over, pass it over the two that we knitted together into one and then we're going to let it drop off, just like that. Just give your yarn a little gentle tug and then knit four. And then we're going to yarn over one and knit one. And then yarn over and knit four. Okay. And then you can check yourself by just um, doing this and seeing that you're in the middle, that you're even. But sometimes you're your stitches can get off, mine do sometimes, so you can always knit two together or yarn over, add one in, just always make sure you have 28. If you want to use a stitch marker, you can, if you have more than one, because I only have two repeats, I'm not doing the stitch marker, and I, because I don't really like the gap that it causes, this is already spacey enough with spaces in it, so I don't want to create an extra gap that doesn't need to be there, but you can create it with, you can just put a piece of yarn a different color on there and um, it won't make a gap if you're doing more than two repeats. So then again, you start from the beginning and you knit wise, slip that right over there and then knit two together. And then take that one with this needle and go up underneath it in the front and pass it right on over the knit two together and let it fall off. And then knit four. Yarn over, knit one. Yarn over, 
net four. And then you should have two left, which I do. And we're going to knit those two. That's row five, it's also row eight. gentle tug and you can see this grows really quickly this is um, let's see that was row five six and seven are the same and um, six seven and nine are the same and eight are the same so a few more things just one more repeat and it's gonna be up to here so that was row five row eight is the same as that row six row seven and row nine are this. So after I show you this, I'll be done with the video. Um, but it, it grows really quick. The first nine rows brought me up to about here. The next nine brought me up to about here. So row six, seven, and nine are knit the first two. And then purl three together. So we're going to put our yarn in the front and we're going to go, and I use my thumbs to help me out here. I'm going to go under three. Sometimes I have a little struggle with the first one. <laughs> so I'm going to give myself a little help by using my thumbs to hold on to those three. And I'm going to come off the needle like this and pull that one up like that. And it's right there. And those are the three going over like that. Then we're going to purl four. So we purl three together, purl four. Sorry, I hung up on my sleeve. And then yarn over and purl one. So we're kind of doing the opposite as we did in row five. Um, but we're purling three together. And then yarn over and purl four. Okay. And then check yourself, see where you are. Should be right in the middle, but I check myself anyways. I might be a little off. We'll see when we get to the end here. Oh no. Um, okay. So now we're going to purl three together again. I think I'm in the middle, but I'm usually counting as I'm going my stitches, but I don't want this video to get too long. So we go under three again, yarn over. <laughs> my needle keeps getting caught in. Okay. And then um, bring the loop over, and you can see the three going over like that. Just give them a little help. And then, whoops, I almost started knitting again. I did almost. Purl four. One, two, three, four. Yarn over, purl one, yarn over. Four. This is two, three, and four. And I'm good. I have two stitches left. Okay. So then knit those last two stitches. And that is six, seven, and row nine. And then you just repeat. So row eight, again, is the same as row five. And that's the entire pattern. And then if you want to just, I just talk about blocking and the pattern and who created it in uh, video. It was, was supposed to be video two, but it uploaded as video one. So I'll see if this op uploads okay, but that's the entire pattern. It's called the porcupine pattern stitch. This porcupine scarf um, was designed by Andy Clark, A-N-D-I-C-L-A-R-K. 
It's usually a lace stitch used with thread, but I like to play with different um, texture yarns and different size needles and see how it turns out. The color I'm using is, um, I'm using Burnett Soft 4-ply, but it's a thin 4-ply. Um, and the color is buff white, so it's kind of like a cream color. Um, and the needles I'm using are bamboo and they're, num they're six millimeters. And that's my video. I hope you'll try this pattern. It grows really, really quick. So um, what I'm going to do next is I'm going to do that same row again, which will be seven. I'm going to do the same row for number five, for eight. And I'm going to do this one again. and It'll be up to about there. So, but that's the end of my video. And I hope you um, will have fun knitting. It's snowing right now. I've got chili on, so I just felt like sharing a hobby video. Okay, have a great day. Thanks for watching. Bye.